Hey guys, Mike here with everything about concrete.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to pour a concrete slab over an existing concrete slab. And in this case, it's a new garage floor over an old garage floor. Now, this concrete floor, this concrete slab here was poured in 1995, so it's about 25 years old. It settled a little bit right after the, the new pour, you know, right after they poured it in 95, it had settled a little bit. And I don't know if you can see, but in the center there, right, right to the left of that crack, there's a floor drain. So it was all pitched to the floor drain when it was brand new. But now it's settled. You can kind of see that big crack there in the middle in that spot right there. So the homeowner didn't know what to do, what he could do. And so he came to me for some questions. And I told him that if it's structurally sound, we can pour a new floor right over this one and fix that. And his, his major issue was his driveway is a little high too. So when it rains, he was getting water running under his garage doors and into his garage and flooding it. So that was another issue for, for him and another good reason about pouring this over the top of the old one so we could raise the height of it a little bit. So what we're doing here basically is we're pouring four and a half inches of concrete in the back. We raise that up four and a half inches and we're pouring about an average of three inches in the front so we're pitching the slab from the back to the front no more floor drain there's going to be about eight inches of concrete where that floor drain is so that's going to cure his water problem and give him a nice dry nice smooth clean floor to work off from he likes working on cars in here now how did we determine this one was structurally sound well you know, we did investigate it. We didn't find any hollow spots under it. It just it settled initially, you know, right after what the homeowner said was right after they poured it, about a year after they developed all this stuff. And we, we drove some uh, heavy vehicles over those cracks to see if they, if they moved at all, and they didn't. And then we tested it for sound to see if it sounded hollow under there, and it didn't. So we determined that it was okay to pour this new floor over the existing one. And it's a lot less expensive to do this than it is to jack the garage up, tear out this old slab, put in a new slab, set the garage back down. The homeowner did get an estimate for that. He got an estimate of $38,000 from somebody to, to raise the garage up, tear out the slab, and form a new one. And that's just, he just, number one, he, he thought it was crazy. And number two, it was just way too much money that he wanted to spend. So, you know, I came in with, with my price of, I was over 10 times less than that. Just to give him a nice brand new floor that was uh, structurally sound and obviously not going to be wet when it rained. So if you're thinking, you know, if you've got a garage floor, if you've got a concrete slab that isn't in very good shape but is structurally sound and you were wondering... You know, can I just pour some concrete over it and pour myself a new slab? Well, yeah, I'm telling you, you can. I mean, I've been doing it for 40 years, and we've done it, I don't know, hundreds of times with success. So, we don't, when we pour this thick, too, I know there's a lot of you guys that ask, well, you, do you need to bond them together? And some of you are like, well, you have to bond them together, and you don't. I mean, the rule of thumb is, for me, what I was taught years ago when I was a young guy, from somebody a lot smarter than me in the concrete business was anything three inches and thicker you can leave unbonded and just let it be its own slab its own floating slab over the existing slab it has plenty of structural strength at that thickness and it doesn't need to bond to the old one there's no reason I mean you don't bond concrete to dirt when you pour over dirt so what do you need to bond concrete to concrete for? It's just, it, and it, it makes sense, made sense to me. So I've always followed that rule of thumb. When I pour three inches or thicker, I don't bond concrete to concrete. When I'm under three inches and the concrete gets thin, then we put a bonding agent down. And I've got that, I've talked about this in a previous video and I'll link it right here up above and I'll link it at the end of the video so you can check that out too. But So anything three inches and less, and we don't typically go any less than an inch and a half when we pour concrete over concrete. So 
from an inch and a half to three inches we use a product called Weldcrete and you just brush that on, roll it on. It's a single component. I'll have a picture of it come up right here. And let that dry and then you pour right over it and it bonds the two together. So that's what we do when they're thin like that. Now you can see we're straight edging that and we're, there's a slope to this concrete floor. Like I said, it's sloping now toward the garage doors. By raising the height of the floor, you know, it does create a few issues. Like, look at the stairs back there in the left-hand corner. See that first step? So it creates an issue with that first step now being kind of a trip hazard. So what the, what the owner's going to do to remedy that, what we came up with was he's going to build a little wooden landing now, the same height as that last step, all the way to that back wall, so, you know, a couple feet wide. And then from that, from that landing, he's going to build a tiny little ramp you know, about 12 inches out, 12 to 18 inches out. So he walks up the little ramp onto that landing and then he goes up the stairs. So that'll remedy that issue. He didn't want to move the stairs at all. And then another issue is the garage doors. He couldn't get somebody there before us. And, you know, we're very busy, so we're on a tight schedule. So he didn't want to delay us. He couldn't get the garage door guy there before us to lift the garage doors. So what we did was we wrapped those those metal rails for the garage door in foam so when the garage door guy shows up all he's got to do is unbolt those rails and slide them up and then his garage doors will sit perfect we've had to do that many times too it's hard to get on the same page with other subs you know everybody's got busy schedules so sometimes we just have to compromise and come up with solutions that'll still get the job done so as you can see we're striking our pads we wet screed everything that we do um, we either wet screed it with a with a hand screed like this or we wet screed it with a vibra screed if you've watched some of my other videos today because of the slope in this we like hand screeding floors that have a slope in it or if they have a uh, floor drain in it where the floors pitch to the drain we hand screed all that It's just less likely you'll have a dip or a hump if you're doing it with a hand screed like we are So we just prefer to do it that way We're also used I'm using a, a 4,000 psi concrete here with fiber mesh in it And as you can see we got wire mesh with uh, those they're called slab bolsters under the wire They're like little chairs that keep the wire up off the bottom and so we get double reinforcement in this thing as well as using a 4000 psi so there should never be any issues with this new garage floor this is a three bay garage too it was 36 by 24 and, and so we parks three really nice cars in here and he's always walking in water, like I said, because of the water issue coming in from the driveway. And the doors, the doors wouldn't even sit level. There was, you know, one side of the garage door would be hitting the concrete, and the other side would be up in the air an inch and a half. So he had a few issues there, too, he was dealing with. But now, they'll come down perfectly level, perfectly flat onto this concrete floor. Here we are striking off that garage door to make sure it's perfectly level in front of that garage door. We check those after too when when we come to finish these with a power trial. You know, we, we check those with a level after too just to double check everything. And you can see me there, I'm raking the concrete for those guys. The key to raking is making sure their feet aren't low. You can see how they're kicking their feet and filling their foot tracks as they screed. And there's nothing worse than being low and having holes as you're screeding. Alright, so we got the first two bays done. Now we're on to this last bay. We're going to pour this concrete out and give this guy a brand new concrete floor, you know, over his old existing floor. And you can see I'm running the bull float there. That bull float, so I'm reaching about 23 feet with that bull float. I've got four of those six foot handles on there. That bull float's got a, a rotating head on it. So all I need to do is twist the handle and it tilts the bull float one way or the other. 
Those are our preferred bull floats. You can see there's barely any lines left by that bull float. It has the rounded edges on it. And those are the ones we prefer. A lot of bull floats you buy have the square edges and they leave pretty deep lines when you bull float. And then that makes it a little more difficult to finish. You know, if you're not an experienced finisher, you gotta worry about getting those lines out. So I'll have links to all these tools we're using, guys. The screeds, the bull floats, you know, those those uh, concrete rakes we're using, the mags. Anything you need to pour concrete, the links will be down in the description below. We use a lot of our tools. Most of our tools come from Marshalltown. Uh, Marshalltown's a really good company. They make really good tools. And they, we can pretty much get whatever we need right from Marshalltown. You can get all this stuff on Amazon too. So again, those links are down there in the description. Go ahead and check them out. We're pouring the concrete out. Like I said, it's a 4,000 PSI mix. It's got three quarter inch stone. We always use a water reducer in our concrete. If any of you guys watch my other videos, um, you know what the water reducer does. If you haven't, the water reducer in the concrete allows us to pour a little bit looser slump, something that's nice and workable without adding water to the concrete. So it's a chemical additive they put in the, in the mix when they batch the concrete out. And that chemical additive and it's just it's just a matter of ounces per yard you know they don't it's not in gallons it's just ounces a few ounces per yard um, depending on what slump you want to pour it at and then so let's say we're pouring I what I'd say is about a I don't know five and a half six inch slump slump is measured in numbers so a one would be really really stiff really dry you know and a ten would be like water so we're pouring probably around a five and a half or a six, which is what we prefer. Something, something workable, but not too wet. Sometimes you get it too wet, it's it's even harder to work with. So that water reducer allows us to do this without hurting the integrity of the concrete or the strength of the concrete. Now, if we needed the concrete a little bit looser, we could just give it a little water right here. And because we're using that water reducer, that's not necessarily going to hurt the concrete you know if we just if we just gave it a, what we call a little drink five gallons or so and made it just a little looser that's that's perfectly fine you can still do that when it's on the job you can see I'm trying to keep up with those guys pulling down that high so they don't have to stop it makes it so much easier for those guys when that concrete is kept just right where they need it and they don't have to stop at all until we run out of concrete or run out of a pad. It doesn't take long to straight edge a bay like that. We call that a bay. So that bay is about the same width as the straight edge, you know, 12 by 12, 14 by 14, whatever you're using for a straight edge. And we're striking that over there in front of that door just to make sure that door is going to open okay. Again, that door sat down a little lower, so what we did was, he's going to put a new door in there too, but he couldn't get a carpenter for that either. So what we did was we, we just cut off the bottom of the door a couple inches so it would still be usable. And we poured the concrete floor, you know, right out over to the outside edge. And then when he gets his new door, he can set it right on top of the new floor. You see my laser there. So we use that top con. RL H5B that's a self leveling laser so all I do is I set that laser on top of those legs I push the on button and it self levels itself and starts spinning and that's what we use to you know shoot our grades with that's the one I recommend for you guys doing this it does I mean it does do slopes so in order to do a slope you just need to move the receiver whatever distance you're gonna you're gonna slope it so and that's how you can shoot your shoot your grades with that. That's what I did with this. There we got that finished straight edged or screeded. We call it both. I'd say most times we call it straight edging. What do you guys call that down in the comments? Let me know. I mean I'm sure in different parts of the country you guys have a slang for whatever terms you guys use. And you can see I'm turning those handles to the right and then I'll turn them a little bit to the left when I pull it back. 
and I'm just walking that thing back and forth and pushing down the aggregate so a lot of I've seen a lot of videos where guys are using like a tamper and they'll tamp the aggregate down and then they'll bull float I've never ever done that and I don't see why you would have to unless you poured the concrete just so dry that you couldn't bull float it um, I personally I don't think I'd have a use for a tamper we've always had good luck just bull floating like this and then so giving it a nice smooth finish with the bull float and then running a power trial over it. So it just saves a step from using a tamper. There would be absolutely no reason to use a tamper on a floor like this at this slump, that's for sure. You can see how easy that is to bull float. So for you guys, you know, if you're curious about pouring concrete over concrete, pouring a new garage floor over an existing garage floor, you know, a new patio slab over an old patio slab, it definitely can be done. Just the things you want to look for are, are the existing concrete structurally in good shape? You know, if it's not, if it's hollow under it, if uh, if you've got pieces that are cracked where one side of the crack is two inches higher than the other, then that might be something you want to investigate further. If uh, if you live in a country, if you live in a part of the country where the frost is picking the slab up, lifting it down each winter, then you know you're gonna you're running a risk of the new slab cracking right where the old one did and you just you might not want to pour over it in that case but it's definitely doable you know like i said we've done hundreds of them in my 40 years and we saved this guy a ton of money by just doing this for him and he was really happy with us so at the end of the day having a happy customer is what we're looking for and this floor should last him for years and years and years well, that's it, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next video.